Lisa. Father, we thank you for this time together to talk about you and your word and your goodness to us. And Father, we ask that you anoint our words and our time together that we may share. May our ears be open to hear and our hearts open to receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So when we were last with you, we uh, January 20th, actually, almost two months ago, <laughs> we uh, talked about um, hope, in a sense, mm -hmm. or the lack of it. <laughs> uh, and things have changed dramatically. It's gotten much darker. <laughs> uh, if only that were false. <laughs> yeah. But we walk by faith. And not, not by, by sight. sight, not by what yes. we see, yes. but, but what but what we believe. Yes. What is that? Uh, yes. Second Corinthians five seven, I believe. But tonight we had discussed that maybe we, I had mentioned last time that I really want to talk about healing. Mm -hmm. I believe healing is a massive part of the body yes. of Christ, the believers' finished work in Christ. Right. And Isaiah fifty three five talks about by His stripes we. Are healed. healed. That was hundreds of years before Christ. And then second, first Peter 2, 24, 24 talks about we Five. were healed by his stripes. Mm -hmm. Past tense, finished, completed work. And don't and don't forget Acts 10 38. Yes, Acts 10 38. Thank you. Uh, it says that how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all who were Ruth. sick and yeah. what? Oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. Yes. That's important because yes. sickness is an oppression from the devil. Right. Yes. Yes. Is sickness from God? No. no. God has no sickness to give. I mean, I, I saw it on Facebook. Somebody asked the question, a friend of mine the other day, John D. Smith out in California. He asked the question. He said, God had six days of creation. And in all of those six days, plus the seventh, there's no mention of him creating sickness. No, right. there was no sickness in the <laughs> no, garden. No, he created everything he was going to create, and it wasn't there. Then he said, "Now in heaven, does do do any of you believe that there is sickness in heaven?" No, no, no. So if it wasn't in the creation and it's not in heaven, why would we think that God intended us to have sickness? Wouldn't He have given it to? Wouldn't He have created it in the garden if that was the intent? You right. would think, and put you it here, think. and. If there is no sickness in heaven, then Jesus being striped for our healing is for here, not for there. <clears throat> and we are told in the word that as he is in heaven, as Jesus is in heaven, so are we here on this earth. So he has no sickness, therefore I have no sickness. And it's not my anything. I hear people say, well, my sugar diabetes or my this or my that. It's not mine. It's not my thought. Only healing is my thought. Now, if you can establish that, that sickness is an oppression, it is not from God, mm -hmm. then you begin to uh, get rid of the, uh, the thought, people praying, mm -hmm. Lord, if it's your will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, yeah. if, if it be your will, heal me. Yeah. Let's work on that a little bit. Is it God's will to heal? Always. It is always God's will to heal. Jesus wasn't beaten to a pulp for it not to have manifestation <laughs> in our bodies. That doesn't mean we're not afflicted from time to time. I'm just coming out of something with healing and with wholeness. And... Um, so that doesn't mean we're not going to have these things come, but we resist them in the name of the Lord because Jesus paid a, a huge price for our total healing and health. And I intend to have everything he paid for for me. Amen. What about, let's deal right there, the stripes that were on Jesus' mm -hmm. back. In fact, all of those things, the bruisings, the beatings, the stripes, the pierced hands, all of that. Um, my thought is this the sacrificial lamb uh when they brought the lamb to the priest the priest would beat him would just mm -hmm. beat the heck out of him and slice him and kick him up never did any of that did he? No. 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 they took no. care of those lambs yeah. 
Yeah. They treated those lambs as precious, made yes. sure they were yes. perfect yes. and pristine yes. and fed and wonderful until the moment they just, because it was the blood that yes. atoned for sins. Without the uh, yes. uh, uh, shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. They could have no scratches or bruises. <clears throat> I mean, they had exactly. to be perfect. So now what's wrong with this picture? Jesus suffered horribly. All we needed was for mm -hmm. him to die on that cross right. and bleed mm -hmm. and then take that blood to the throne and say, here's the, here's the blood Yes. and accepted and done. That was our eternal life. That was the remission of sins forgiven and made righteous. What about the beatings and the slashing and the and the bruising and the even bleeding from your pores from pressure in the garden and especially tonight the stripes on his back that was not necessary for our eternal redemption right that was absolutely unnecessary yeah. it doesn't have any precedence in the yes, old testament yes, sacrifice yes. they did not treat the sacrificial right. lambs brutally mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was not a part of eternal redemption then what was it a part of it was part of our whole man the word for the whole man, for the cleansing, for the wholeness, for the sicknesses and diseases to be wiped mm -hmm. away, for anything that <laughs> pertains to me, Jesus paid for it at that cross. And specifically in this realm, because do I need yes. healing in heaven? No, no, no. Do I need no. money in heaven? No. no. Do no. I need pressure put off me in heaven, no. taken no. off? No. Do I need depression healed in no, heaven? Grief. No. In other words, everything that he got beat for, yes, yes, everything yes. that he got beat for yes, and right. slashed for this right. was for this mm -hmm. right here. Right here, yes. In other words, that was to break curses on this earth in this plane for this existence. Yes. Has yes. nothing to do with my eternal. Nothing. The whole man. I mean, I think it's at the end of, uh, is it Corinthians, I think? It talks about... Your whole man, body, spirit, soul, and mind, the whole man deliver you yes. whole. Yes. 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 So yes. once you begin to look at this from just a, a, a kid's point of view, you're going, wait a minute. All I need to do is pay the blood for the eternal thing. Mm -hmm. The perfect sacrifice, the blood. He we was perfect. There was yeah. no, yeah. nothing yeah. wrong with him. Yeah. But the bruising, the beating, and everything physically would have disqualified him. Yeah. As a lamb. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Except, because by that time he wasn't perfect. I mean, he would have been. He was marred. Yeah. He was he was battered, and it says, I mean, if there's any flaw in that lamb, couldn't do it. So what we're looking at now is the flaw that was in the lambs would have been a physical mm -hmm. malnourn, mal, you know, something that's abnormal. Yeah. In Jesus, there was the flaw would have been: is there anything in his blood or his spirit? Mm-hmm. Jesus said one time, Satan has come, but he's found nothing, nothing in me. In me. Yes. Nothing to grab yes. hold yes. of, none to hold him back, nothing. Yeah. Yes. Perfect sacrifice. So let's come back to this realm, physical realm, where we're living in this body, our spirit man, living in this physical body. Jesus had his physical body beaten, bruised, yes. and, and striped, and all of these other things for many of the curses, for all of the curses that are against us in this physical realm to break those and covered by the blood of the, uh, uh, by that sac the stripes that were on his back. That's why Isaiah and first Peter mentioned by his stripes, those seven wounds, those uh, 40, 39, 39, 39, 39 slashes, just that was ripped yes. because he yes. couldn't be sick. He had by faith had to be imputed onto him right. yeah. Yeah. because sickness had no hold on him. Yeah. And, and so by faith, that was given to him. He accepted and received it as this beating and punishment mm -hmm. so that you could be healed. And then it's ratified by his resurrection coming up out of as an eternal mm -hmm. priest and an accepted sacrifice to say, everything I did on the way to the cross is as important as everything I did on yes. the cross. Yes, yes. So I just wanted to make that clear before we went any further about healing. Sickness is an oppression. Right. It is not our, our lot in life. And it's not, God does not use sickness to teach us. He can, he can, if you're sick and you start to give it to him on your way out, right. you can learn. But he's not going to put it on us. Correct. It's like, I don't break my, my children's arms to, to teach, teach them. them. It's that once. Well, we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. No. We, God doesn't do that. If God did the things that 
he's accused of so many times, if he were human, yes. he'd be in prison. Yes. Because he sends terrible storms, mm -hmm. he takes people's lives, he breaks, you know, gives them sickness. And it's just not true. That's why Jesus bore it. He did do it to his own son. Yes. The other day I was thinking about that, about mm -hmm. um, and I don't even know what I was thinking about about but again, we say, when we get angry about something, oh, somebody needs to pay for that. Or, you know, somebody yeah. did something horrible. Yeah. Oh, somebody needs to pay for that. Somebody did. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Jesus, Jesus paid the price for that. So he, all, Jesus bore all the sicknesses yes. ever. In fact, I heard um, uh, one man preaching one time, and he said the 39 stripes, that there were actually, that every sickness actually comes out of a base of 39 sicknesses you know so different things would be you know a branch that comes out of that root but he took care of everything no matter no matter if when he lived or at that time that disease hadn't yes. been known on the earth bird flu mm -hmm. yeah this that or that yeah. he covered yeah. it all mm -hmm. yes yeah. amen and the life we heard all through the old testament very critical element the, the life, life is, is in the, in the blood. blood all of the yes. blood borne diseases yes. 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 all of yes. the other yes. diseases the life is in the blood. Right. And yes. that's what Jesus gave for us. This perfect, perfect blood poured out of his yes. back yes. with those stripes, washing down over that flesh. And I'm telling you, where the blood goes, there's healing. Amen. Amen. There's healing. Amen. So that's what we were we are going to deal with tonight is this thing of healing. Uh, several places in the scripture from the very beginning, man, God deals with healing. He wants yes. his people healed. Yes. He wants his people well. Yes. And then you come to Jesus, who is the absolute end of that thing, saying, now healing is not just an event. It is available to every believer. God wants you well. Why are there yes, hospitals? Yes. Why is there medicine and doctors? My own personal feeling is the blessing of God, the love of God to the world, mm -hmm. saying, even if you don't believe in me, mm -hmm. I want you well. Yes. So I've given yes. men ideas, and I've helped them yes. find these yes. cures, yes. like for polio yes. and other things, and cancer's coming. And yes. stuff where the healing of God is available. But if you don't believe in healing and you'll never believe in God, I still love you. Yes. And I am going to give you medicines and doctors and stuff. It's a poor substitute because you can die at the hands of a doctor as quick as you can, anything else. And I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying God's the only sure bet. Yes. But his love gave medicines and everything else to yes. men because God loves you. He wants you well. Well, but as in anything else in life, whether whether God heals us without the use of a doctor of medicine, or if we do use a doctor of medicine, mm -hmm. we still have to do it by faith. Yeah, medicine, <laughs> yes. medicine yes. only works by faith. Yes, yes. The placebos and the, and the yes. blind trials prove that. Right. It's like, man, you almost get as many people well from the medicine mm -hmm. in a placebo as they do from the act people who actually took yes. this. Right. Yeah. Because, because they, they believed, believed they were getting real. a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. this clock is going to be dinging a lot, so don't worry about it. So now we have many testimonies of healing in our family. Yes. I mean, let me, before we go yeah. to go there, um, let me just delve in for a minute about maybe why we don't see a lot of healing in the, in the body of Christ or in the world. And I know there've been healing revivals where uh, God has anointed people to bring healing. And I know reading stories from Oral Roberts, he would say he could actually sense the spirit of God when he would lay hands on people when he would know people were touched and mm -hmm. other times he just laid hands on people, he didn't feel the, the, the healing. But you know, Jesus said out of our bellies would flow yes. rivers of living Lily. water. Mm -hmm. And I believe that um, one of the reasons we don't see a lot of healings because for one reason, the churches are split about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know, salvation, for the most part, every Christian church believes in salvation. You have to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. But when it comes to healing, some are going to say healing is for today. Some are going to say it's not for today. So there's a division. So people don't know, well, where do I put my stock? You know, where am I going to put all my faith in healing, in, in concentration of faith? And so I think that's part of it. But I've come to believe, you know what, that the healer lives within me. Absolutely. And I'm not looking Absolutely. for healing to come, you know, down from heaven. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the healer lives within me. And so lately, when I've been laying hands on people, I've been speaking to that well, that rivers yes, of living water yes. to begin to uh, well up within them and the healing yes. to flow up and out of us, not coming down to us. Yeah. So there's 
in the Bible talks about the gift, gifts yes. of healing. Right. Yes. And then there's the healings. Right. Which is two means two separate things. Right. In other words, gift of healing is a supernatural impartation, mm -hmm. supernatural mm -hmm. thing. But the right of every believer, yes, the right of yes. every believer yes. to yes. walk yes. in faith is that is part yes. of that living river, that right. kingdom of God mm -hmm. in you. The, the spirit of the word in you is to call up, spring up, oh well. Yes. That healing is available to you if yes. nobody ever yes, lays a finger yes, on you. Yes, that's is. right. You yes, don't have is. to wait for somebody to pray for you. Amen. But John, I, no, is it James talks about lay hands on the sick and they, they shall, shall recover. recover. That is, if you want people to lay hands on you and that helps your faith, if you go to the doctor and that helps your faith, if you take medicine and you, we're all about helping your faith. Yeah. Helping your faith, whether you take medicine or don't take medicine, help your faith. If, take an aspirin for goodness sakes. <laughs> you know, seriously. Yes. Pray, say thank you God that you're healing me and I'm gonna take this aspirin to help. <laughs> you know, you yeah. get in. Because God doesn't, God is not intimidated by anything you do Amen. or the Satan Amen. can do. Yes. Your faith will not be short circuited by going to a doctor or medicine or anything else. It will not be short circuited. Anything that you can do, like I can't think the pain's so bad, take some medicine, start thinking, and now start right. praying. Right. Mm -hmm. And get your faith online because yes. the enemy's trying to keep you from praying and mm -hmm. trying to keep you from believing and getting your yes. mind all jumbled and you, you can't believe. Yeah. So, and not only that, yeah. we've seen people um, that, okay, I'm going to prove that I believe I'm healed, so I'm going to quit my medicine. Uh, even when I was younger, I took off my glasses. Oh, I, you know, I believe, I mean, I was blind as a bat, but I was going to take off my glasses to show that I believe. Yeah. And, and we think we got to prove to God that I believe. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? When I believe God and it's manifest, mm -hmm. Then if I'm taking medicine and I'm healed, I'm taking medicine for something I no longer have. So therefore, I'm going to have other issues. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it, yeah. I'll have to go to the doctor and he'll say, well, why are you taking this medicine? You no longer have diabetes. Granddaddy was healed. They had that issue. Yes. He, he was having <laughs> adverse reactions because now he was taking insulin, but he was no longer a diabetic. So and, and if I'm believing God for healing and I'm wearing contacts or glasses, then my eyes are going to go blurry because I no longer need those things. But that does not, as you said, it doesn't intimidate God. Mm -hmm. And it does, And I think um, this is where the enemy gets on a prove, prove, mm -hmm. prove, you know, yeah. and that's how he came to Jesus in the wilderness. If you are the son of God, yeah. if you are the prove, 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 yeah. prove. And that's where we get in trouble. Mm -hmm. I don't have to prove I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you know that you're a believer. It. That's right. I don't have to prove I'm a believer. Well, you need to do this and that. No. Nope. That's right. I have to, all I have to do is be. Yes. And the Holy yes. Ghost is yes. that in me. And the same with healing. Yes. So is my faith in healing or my faith in what? Him. The healer. The healer, exactly. That is the key. The key is not the event, but the, the, the healer. Yes, yes, yes. So some people get shipwrecked <clears throat> because they don't get healed in a certain amount of time or it's not happening yeah. like mm -hmm. they think and stuff. Yeah. You're going, no, my faith is in Jesus is yes. my healer. Yes. Right. Because yes. of the stripes yes. on his back, it's finished, it's done. And it's mine, and therefore my faith is in him, and don't get shipwrecked and trying to say, oh, I've got to have faith for healing today. No, I have faith today that Jesus loves me and that he's my healer and that he did that 2,000 years ago, and it's mine, and it's coming. It's yes. mine now. Yes. I keep thinking of the scripture that he sent his word and healed them. He sent his word to us, and when we get that word of healing mm -hmm. in our heart and while we're even going through it, by his stripes, I was healed. It was done at the cross. Mm -hmm. He's not healing me today. He's not rambling around in heaven trying to get healing to me today. He did it at the cross, and he sent that word across these generations to me for my healing today. Yes, because, you know, uh, and you quoted that scripture earlier that talked about Without the, remi without the remitting of blood. Without the shedding. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Right. Without Jesus' back being striped, there, there was no healing, basically. Um, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But it, the blood has already been shed. Right. There is right. not fresh blood that Jesus yes. is going to be in striped yes. again. Yes. It was done 2,000 years yes. ago. Yes. It was taken care of. So praise God for that. Can I go back to the thing about dad being healed? Mm -hmm. uh, Debbie brought it up about dad was a diabetic. He'd been a diabetic for years, took two shots a day. And uh, he usually gave it to him in his abdomen because he said it was easier that way. But nevertheless, 
two shots a day. And one day he goes into a diabetic coma, we thought, my brother thought. And so they did all the things to, that you know to do whenever there's a diabetic coma involved. And um, it turns out that daddy had overdosed on insulin. He was healed after taking insulin for years and years Decades. and years. Yeah. And, and healed while still taking it and didn't know he was healed until he overdosed on insulin and had to quit taking insulin. And another point of healing with my dad, my dad was sitting in church one day listening to um, Sister Groves from Australia. This couple was over here in America and traveling with T.L. Osborne, uh, actually, who held his first tent revival at my dad's church in Easton, Maryland. And so Sister Groves would get up and teach on healing, teach the word every morning, and then there would be a healing service at night. But you couldn't get in the healing line until you'd been in the healing service where they taught the word of God. And uh, so dad's sitting there and his eyes get all foggy and everything he can't see. And he takes off his glasses and he wipes his glasses and he put them back on and his eyes were still foggy and he took them off two or three times until he finally realized he was healed sitting there listening to the word of God being preached and without even thinking about wanting his eyes healed. Here he received healing because the word of God was so vibrant and came into his body. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was yes. with God, and the Word was God. Uh, verse 14 Love it. says, and the Word became, became flesh, flesh. flesh and dwelt among us. That's, a, that's an actual thing. Yes. The Word became Jesus, flesh. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And so the Word in you, as you put the Word in, as you're hearing the Word of healing, and hope rises in you, uh, Hebrews 11, 1, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. No, that's, uh, that's a different one I'm thinking of. But yeah. faith is the substance of yeah. things hope for. hope for. Hope is rising in your heart yeah. when you're healing yeah. some of this yeah. stuff. Hope is rising. Faith attaches to hope. And that word begins to work and uh, becomes to flesh out, begins to yes. flesh out. It yes. becomes yes. flesh out of the unseen world, Hebrews 11.3 says. By faith we understand the worlds were created by things, everything you can see, by things that you cannot see. That's right. how they were created, yeah. by the Word. And if you're suffering tonight while you're listening to us, we're giving you the Word. And the scripture Daryl just said by accident was, <laughs> faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans you're 10, 17. Right. You right. And, and, and you are hearing the Word yeah. of God preached right now. You can mm -hmm. receive healing yes. even as we are speaking. Yes. I love that. Yes. And what she meant by if you're suffering, uh, as you're listening to us, she meant like if you're sick or something, but not suffering from <laughs> listening to us. Well, I hope uh, if they're suffering by listening, just turn us no, off. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so the healing has been a part of our family from the time oh, yes. um, I was a kid, uh, 1963. Is that the right time? Yes. Uh, I had no clue what was going on. I just know it's getting close to Christmas and that's all I was interested in. But then my grandmother was sick. My, my yes, grandmother. Yes, my mother. My mom and dad actually took sick. The, it was the week after Christmas and they both were sick in bed and we were visiting from Maryland. They lived in Florida and uh, they both had fevers and, and we thought it was the flu. We thought both of them were just suffering with the flu. Well, dad gets well and gets out of bed and mother kept being sick, just very sick. So it was uh, on New Year's Day, it was 64, and we had to call the ambulance and get mother to the hospital. And there's an old saying that whatever you do on January 1st is what you're gonna be doing all the rest of the year. And of course, guess what came in my mind is I'm riding in the ambulance with my sick mom to the hospital. But we got mom to the hospital and they checked her all out. And they called, the doctor called my dad and I into the office with him. And he said, well, here is what we found. We, he, we have found at least 50 cancers in her body. The root of it seems to be in her abdomen area and it's fleshed out all over her body and her lungs and everything. Said so she's just full of cancer. 
And my question to the doctor was, well, can you operate? And he said, there's no way we can operate. It, she's too far gone. And I said, well, thank the Lord. Mother never wanted surgery. And that was the first thing that came to my mind. But the second thing that came to my mind, he said, there's just no hope. And he looked at me, he said, don't leave town. She's got maybe three to five days at the most. So be in town, don't leave. And I looked at that doctor and I said, well, you know, doctor, my family have preached healing as long as I can remember. And we're gonna watch God do what God does. My dad and I went back to his house and dad was really broken up and everything. We called my brother from work and he came and we prayed and we, people everywhere were praying. All over the nation we were getting calls as it went out. And that was on a Friday, I believe, that the doctor gave us his report. My husband, was to preach for my dad that Sunday morning. And God gave him the scripture that says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, but that his glory would be revealed. You would see his glory revealed. And my husband got up and preached that sermon. And that day in church, we did not tell any of dad's church people that mother had cancer. The word cancer was not allowed to be used. We did not allow anyone to say cancer in her room. There's just something about that word that many people were just, oh, well, there's no use to even try. And so we even had people sitting at mother's hospital door to tell people they could not say anything about cancer. But dad's church that Sunday morning didn't know anything. They just knew mother was very sick. And a lady got up and she said, today is a day of miracles. Amen. And we didn't know, we were believing that, but we had nothing from the doctor at that point. Well, when my husband got finished preaching and it was a glorious service, a victorious service. And uh, we tried to call the doctor immediately after church and he didn't answer and he didn't answer all day long. The doctor never would answer his phone. That night about 11 or 11.30, the doctor called us and he was, said he was returning our calls and his voice was just shaking. And um, as he gave his report, his report was this, um, I don't want to get your hopes up, but we've temporarily lost the cancer. They temporarily lost that <laughs> cancer and 32 years later, she asked all of our permission if we would allow her to go home to be with the Lord. And uh, needless to say, we did. And on Easter Sunday uh, in 1996, high noon, mom went running to meet the Lord. And, and just, it was just awesome. So how long was she in the hospital? She was in the hospital from Friday to the following Friday and the, we had told the doctors they were not to touch mother. They were not to do another thing. They had already told us she was terminal. They had already told us she was dying. And so we just said, all right, don't touch her. Don't do another thing. And there was a specialist, cancer specialist, that came in. And he took blood from her bone marrow or got into her bone, whatever they do in, in checking the test. And he pulled a chair up beside my mother's bed and he looked at her and he said, Mrs. Morris, he said, these hands have not taken that cancer out of your body. Therefore, you still have it. Mother didn't know she had cancer till that wonderful surgeon told her that. And it wasn't, but just a couple of years later, we heard that surgeon had passed away with cancer. Mm. And, uh, but mother lived for 32 years after. Without it. So, without, so she without was in it. a week. In the One week. And then we had to demand. My dad went to the desk and demanded they release mother. And they didn't want to let her go. And he said, you will let her go. And I demand. And they said, well, what will we put on her report? And my dad said, I don't care. You can put it's a bloody cancer for all I care. I don't care what you put on her report. I'm taking her home. And dad brought her home. 
And uh, on her report in St. Joseph's Hospital in Tampa, Florida, Catholic Hospital, they wrote miracle. So that's how it ended, ended at the hospital. But even though she came home, how long was it till grandmother felt normal? Uh, it was nine, it was in September that mother finally came out one day and said, I feel normal for the first time. We felt that mother had never had medication of any kind. And we felt that all the stuff they did to her in the hospital was one of the problems she had. It was not because of cancer. It was not because she was sick. She just didn't feel herself. But in September, she came out one morning and- But because she was, didn't feel normal, did not negate the no, fact that there had been a mirror. That's right, that's right, that's good, Debbie. Um, th so many times we're looking at the signs mm -hmm. and if I don't feel good, then <clears throat> it must not have happened. And that wasn't her case at all. She didn't feel normal. She didn't feel her energy and her strength back for nine months. And when it came back, she was completely well, but she didn't give in to, well, I guess I still have cancer or something. Oh, uh, and this is, hey, dudes, this is like way before word of faith. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we yeah. didn't know to have, you know, like yeah. a good confession yeah. in yeah. our mouth and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I'm not j down in the word of faith. I'm a big proponent of your words, even though, yeah. man, I speak some mass bad stuff. <laughs> but I mean, they didn't have the benefit of a yeah. lot of yeah. teaching and yeah. training yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. So it wasn't a superstitious or you said the wrong thing. They just believe Jesus. Yeah, we right. are simpletons. We believe Jesus. <laughs> Our family motto is like, God's enough. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. God's enough. Yeah. I, I know. But the, the deal with me is the proof's in the pudding. Yes. And the proof's in the pudding is she didn't live impaired for 32 years. No, right? no. They built a golf course. They built houses. <laughs> she had a nine-year-old son. Yes, my at grandmother at the time had a nine-year-old son that she... That's a whole nother story we can tell, another show. Okay. <laughs> but a whole, uh, 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 she had a nine-year-old son to raise. Yes, my uncle, her younger brother. And uh, um, so she lived that life, raised yes. that son. Yes. And, and uh, saw her grand, great-grandchildren, or yeah. saw her grandchildren by, by that youngest right. son. Mm -hmm. And he married late. <laughs> but saw her, saw her great grandchildren because of my children. Ah, yes. yes. So yes. she saw great grandchildren and Uncle Dick's great grandkids. Oh yeah, rub it in. I don't. Really <laughs> anyway, uh, this is just uh, some uh, just a small One. portion of our family's things. But I mean, it's like, dude, you get into a hospital, you're sick, you don't know why. Then they come tell you you're dead, <laughs> and in five days you walk out <laughs> with the X-rays that say, now you see it, now you don't. <laughs> And the doctor's still going, I didn't take it out. Yeah, yeah. You still see a lot of that yeah. in the profession in the world. Yeah. And uh, that's sad, the arrogance. But God's a healer. I'm telling you, God's a healer. And we have to be um, not convinced. I'm not going to say convinced because if you're convinced one way, somebody can come along and convince, convince you a different way. Mm -hmm. But you must receive the revelation. If you don't have it, pray about this and, and ask the Lord to really enlarge your spirit to receive this. When it comes to the things of God, we have to get almost selfish. Mm -hmm. In other words, if nobody I've ever heard of has been healed, yes. if nobody else is being healed, I'm going to be healed today because I believe Jesus yes. did it for me. Yes. Yes. And it's just like <clears throat> we could go on the news every day and hear about people um, having a, uh, an accident in mm -hmm. their car. But that doesn't stop me from getting in my car and driving yes, it. And I'm yes, not afraid. Yes, I'm yes. not expecting, well, that happened to them, but that's yeah. not going to be my experience. Yes. And so we've got to become that um, assured of what Jesus did for us alone, although corporately, mm -hmm. that it's for me. Yes. That even if if my best friend gets a bad diagnosis and, and, and dies, I believe I'm going to live because there's yes. a scripture that says that you will uh, you will live and not de die and to declare exactly. the glory of the Lord. Psalm 116 and Psalm 118 have several, a couple yeah. of different scriptures that say that. Right. It says, I, I will live and not, not die. die. God has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. And that's Amen. Old Testament. Yeah. That's what it says. Yeah. And uh, you begin to understand, well, Psalm 91, I believe it's yes. Psalm 91 says, a thousand may fall, may fall, may fall at my side, side and 10,000 10, at my right hand, hand but, it's but it won't come near me. me. Now that sounds selfish, but at the end of the day, it is this, look, yes. my faith can't save anybody. Yeah. My faith can't heal anybody. 
I can release my faith to join with theirs yes. and believe for them. And sometimes maybe God maybe allow your faith like the people that came to Jesus and let the guy down into right. Jesus' presence, right. but their faith didn't heal him, did it? Their faith got him to the healer. Yes. And that's what my faith is. I want to get people to the healer Amen. and I want to get me to the healer because that's something that's already paid for. Yes. It's already yes. mine. It's already written in heaven. Daryl Chesser is healed. Yes. So why would I do without it? I'm yes. greedy for yes. it in that sense. Yes. Yes. And it's like, well, what if you don't get healed? It's a win-win. Death, where's your sting? Where's your victory? Yeah. If I die, I win. I can't lose. Do you understand? I want to be well here. I'm going to be well here. And then when it's time to go, I'm going to go. Well, what if you go early? I win. For yes. me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. <laughs> anyway, we have we could talk forever on this. We're going to shut it down for tonight. But, but let me just make one more statement. There you go. In 2014... We need to know this oh, yeah. more than we've ever known it. We need to know Jesus is there mm -hmm. to supply our every need like we can't imagine. And in healing areas, we need to know that today. Yeah. Yeah, if you liked your healing in the Old Testament, you, you can like keep your healing in the New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, okay. Anyway, before we go, will you pray for them for healing, for yes. anyone who's believing? Yes. If, you're, if you're believing tonight for you or for someone else, the Bible says, if any is sick among you, let them call for the elders yes. of the church, and they'll lay hands upon you. We're not going to lay hands on you, but we'll stretch out our hands, and we'll, and, and we'll let the Holy Ghost <laughs> yes. come visit. Yes, 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 yes. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for the faith that has come to those who yes. are receiving it yes. now. You said that hearing, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing, hearing by, by the word, the word yes. of the yes. Lord. Yes. And Father God, as we've given the word of the Lord forth, there's been faith arising yes. in the hearts yes. of people. Mm -hmm. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we mm -hmm. send the word of healing right now in the name yes. of the Lord. Jesus, you bore the stripes for everyone's healing. Jesus, you paid the price. You paid a horrific price for our healing. And therefore, we know it's your will to heal yes. each and every one. And Father, I thank you for the healings that are taking place even now. Yes. I thank Amen. you, Lord God, for yes. the reports we're going to receive Amen. because of healings that have come to people tonight Amen. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Believe Jesus. Keep believing Jesus. Keep Amen. him foremost in your thoughts and your mind. Amen. He is the healer. He is the healer. Amen. And when you know that you're healed, let us know that you receive yes. through the word. We yes. want to rejoice with you with what God is doing in your life. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us tonight. Before we go, let me just do a shameless plug. Mom wrote a book a couple of years ago called uh, Faith of My Father, right? Mm -hmm. About her dad. And, uh, and there's many miracles and mm -hmm. stories in there. And it's, I got to tell you, it's, it's, a, it's a very faith-inspiring book when you get a chance to read it. If you're interested, it's on the website at Sea Life Ministries. Uh, dot org, or you can go to lulu.com, a book site, and order it from there in hardcover, softcover, even some, I believe we have a digital download. Digital download. PDF, yep. uh, an iBook, I believe e it is. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry to throw that in there, but it's important because it's a real faith tool. Very interesting book. And thanks again for being with us tonight. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Peace.